In Flanders Fields, where the poppies blow. We've all heard this poem a million times. But the question is, did they really? Today's video, we're going to be looking at whether or not this is a botanical myth or there is some truth to this poem and what soldiers would have seen on the battlefields in World War I. If you don't know who I am, my name is Ashley. I have a Bachelor's of Science in Soil Science, and I like to take that science and apply it normally to the garden and to plants. But today's video, I think it's fitting to do something based in remembrance, and that is the poppy. The poppy is actually native to Europe and Western Asia, and they have different cousins. Probably one of the more famous ones is the opium poppy. The ones that we wear for remembrance have nothing to do with the opium poppy. Very common misconception there. And this plant looks delicate. It usually has one single stem that then houses or holds onto a fluorescence, a flower that is incredibly large and beautiful. But this plant is the farthest thing from delicate. It's what we like to call an ecological opportunist. The seeds are like microscopic little time capsules that can survive in the soil buried for somewhere between 80 to 100 years. Germination has even been observed in some cases with poppies as sub poppy seeds as old as 120 years. This means that a seed can remain dormant for up to three human generations until things like bombings, vehicles, humans go in and actually disturb that soil. In the case of Flanders fields or most of Europe at the time, these spaces where the battles were fought were, was actually farmland. So things like wheat, barley, oats was what was being grown there for approximately the last hundred years. Meaning poppies weren't really seen. Where they resided was somewhere around five to 25 centimeters below the soil surface. So the activities of World War I actually kicked a lot of dormant poppy seeds from a hundred years ago up onto the surface, which makes sense because that space prior to it being farmland was a forest of sorts with wildflower meadows, which would have included things like poppies. So when the artillery shells hit flounder fields, it turned the topsoil and ultimately made things from the Middle Ages come to the surface where it can now receive light. And this is what we call a photoblastic response. Kind of a fitting name for what happened. And ultimately speaking, before 1915, and while there wasn't poppies just naturally residing there in 1915, and in 1915, we decided to bring nature back to the space. So flounder field soil type, both before and after World War I, is what we call a loam, and particularly a clay loam, which is very easily compacted when things like equipment, humans, impact, hits it. When it's wet, it's even worse. And it's what we usually associate with very hard soil. Now, the Belgian archives or the 1910 census actually showed us what was in the space if there wasn't farmland. And it includes things like plantains, clover, buttercups, and various different types of grasses. And you guys have seen all of these in your yards because we actually have them here in North America as well. And a British Geological Survey was done in 2014 looking at the impact of bombs on that soil type and how much compaction it truly did cause. It actually caused compaction where it hit up to 1.5 meters in depth, which is huge. That's a lot of force. Not to mention that the native clovers and plantains in the area were absolutely destroyed and decimated. They didn't have the same ecological vigor that a poppy does. They need roots to be able to survive. And the trenching and the disruption of that soil destroyed these roots to the point that in many spaces, the clover and plantain wasn't able to recolonize the space for many, many years after and or not at all. Now, this is a little bit morbid, but it is the reality of what happened. And that is the change in the soil chemistry. In particular, it's leaning towards more acidic due to things like gunpowder and the decaying of bodies. This explosion in nitrate caused nitric acid to form, which in turn caused that pH to drop. In the Journal of Archaeology Science, there was a study done in 2017 
that looked at the archaeology of mass graves and the effect it had on the soil. And there were two nutrients in particular that spiked, which in turn caused an explosion in vegetative growth. And that obviously was nitrogen and the second one being phosphorus. The explosives, the TNT pyric acid that would have been disposed of on the land is considered to be toxic and detrimental. However, they have looked at this and it takes around one to two years but the microbes in the soil do over time degrade TNT and pyric acid to the point that it is no longer affecting the soil negatively. And I'm not sure, obviously, how much of an impact this would have had on the poppies or the vegetative growth in that area, mostly because we know the poppies were showing up as there was war taking place. So I think it's probably safe to say there wasn't enough to be a truly toxic response within the soil. One really important thing to note is, and specifically to World War, I think a lot of wars you could probably note this in, and that is the depositing of heavy metals. Flanders fields to this day have heavy metals present in them, and this can include various different elements like lead, copper, zinc. I mean, the list is pretty endless. And in 2012, there was an environmental study done on Flanders fields in particular, and it is still considered contaminated soil. Interestingly enough, poppies in particular are what we call phytoaccumulators. So they're not hyper phytoaccumulators, -phyto meaning they don't, you know, take up as much toxin as such something like a sunflower would. However, they can uptake heavy metals and be not affected by them at all. Now, interestingly enough, alongside the poppies that were growing, there were other flowers that were growing. And these flowers that grew were also flowers that thrived and survived off of soil disturbance. So corn flowers is one, thistle is another, shepherd's purse. So the three kind of big ones that soldiers would have seen is thistle, corn flower, and shepherd's purse. Two of which obviously are not the prettiest, but one cornflower is relatively pretty. Now, botany, ecology, just plant science in general has always been a big thing for you humans. And so there was a botanical garden group in the 1920s that actually went back to the war fields to assess kind of what was going on. And while it did have poppies and cornflowers, the dominant species of plant was just weeds. And it wasn't until 1935 when things like ryegrass and clover began to actually move back into the area. And just like many soldiers, the soil actually does carry some PTSD with it. Like I said, those soil contaminants are still present. In some areas, it is so present that it is considered contaminated soil to this day. So the poppy success wasn't just chance. There's an actual word for it in the world of ecology, and we call it disturbance recovery. These seeds waited in silence, kind of like society did, and then began to fully recover and rebuild their population. So John McCrae, very likely did see poppies and saw a lot of them. And it probably was one of the only flowers that he saw in an otherwise gruesome area. But it's just fitting that poppies' resilience and how it becomes beautiful is through disturbance of the soil and what otherwise was a peaceful resting place. Pinky Crew, I know many of you probably have family members out there that either are serving in the military and or have served in the military. And if they have and you want them to be remembered, feel free to pop their names down in the comments below. For me personally, I've had an uncle served in one of the first world wars. And then I have a co cousin who was serving up until very recently in the Canadian military, specifically for the Navy portion of it. And for any of the Geek Crew members who are serving the military currently, thank you so much for your service. Feel free to comment down below how you felt about this video, and Geek Crew, show your support for them. I personally will be at SAS Tell Center, which is the largest indoor Remembrance Day ceremony on earth. It's my understanding. It's huge. So if you're there, say hi. It's usually pretty packed. And with that being said, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.